Chris Rock made a joke about Will Smith's wife's bald head. Will Smith's wife suffers from alopecia, and that's why she has a bald head. Will Smith got angry and got up on stage and slapped Chris Rock. Uh, this exchange was not a joke. This was not some sort of planned thing. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's G.I. Jane name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was the greatest night in the history of television. Ukraine's President Zelensky let the cat out of the bag by admitting that NATO told him that Ukraine would not join NATO. Yet he was to pretend that Ukraine was going to join NATO with the obvious agenda of provoking Russia by threatening Russia's security. I requested them personally to, to say directly that we are going to accept you into NATO or NATO in a year or two or five. To say it directly and clearly or just say no. And the response was very clear. You are not going to be a NATO or EU member, but publicly the doors will remain open. For years, Russia has made it clear that they didn't want their security put at risk by NATO expanding any more eastward and that NATO should keep its promise not to expand eastward. I went into detail about that promise in the video, which I'll link to at the end of this video. And I'll add this additional proof here that I didn't mention in the other video, that Der Spiegel published a document confirming the promise given to Russia not to extend NATO beyond Germany. Like I said, see my other video for more details about that and about the U.S. double standard, where Russia is only asking for the same security assurances that the United States insists for itself. So the U.S. is pushing a double standard, and the U.S. media is keeping that fact from the American people because they sell wars. That's what the U.S. media does. They sell war. The point is, this was a scheme to provoke Russia, intentionally provoke Russia. Ukraine also signed security agreements pledging not to enhance their security at the expense of other states. So joining NATO would also violate those security agreements. Ukraine has been bombing Russian speakers in the Donbass region for seven and a half years. For example, note that this report is before what the Western world is considering the start of the Russia-Ukraine war. At a time when U Ukraine was supposedly worried about Russia attacking it, they still couldn't stop themselves from bombing the Donetsk People's Republic. I'm Patrick Lancaster coming to you from the Ukraine war front line. Just behind this building behind me is the actual front line itself, less than a kilometer. This morning, fighting has erupted throughout the front line, all the way from up north through the anti-government controlled Lugansk People's Republic to here in the southern area, the Donetsk People's Republic. Early this morning, the anti-government forces have accused Ukraine of firing on their territory and the LPR and DPR have responded with an attack of their own, as they say, to defend their inhabitants. From the statements of a number of our colleagues, one may get the impression that Russia's recognition of the LPR and the DPR took place suddenly for no reason at all. Of course, that's not the case. It should be remembered that the DPR and the LPR declared their independence from Ukraine back in 2014. But we only recognize them now, despite the high level of support for doing so, both in the republics themselves and in Russian society from the very beginning. At the time, the hope won out that the Ukrainian Maidan regime would think again and would stop talking to their own citizens in the East in the language of cannons and shooting and threats and shelling. 
time and again we firmly asked Kiev to listen to the aspirations of the people living in Donbass and the Russian-speaking residents of the country to respect their entirely legitimate desire to use their mother tongue and to teach their children in that language and also to honour the memories of those who liberated the land from fascists rather than those who fought on the side of fascists and had a hand in the killing of hundreds of thousands of people during the Second World War. After Ukrainian military adventures butted up against the determination of the people of Donetsk and Lugansk to defend their lands, the Minsk agreements were signed and the package of measures was adopted with the aim of implementing it. There was once again hope for peace and that the Maidan authorities would be sensible, having exhausted the desire to um, submerge Donetsk and Lugansk in blood. There was a particularly great amount of hope invested in the election in 2019 of a new president of Ukraine who promised at long last to establish peace in Donbass. However, those who hoped that the Ukrainian authorities would take a peaceful stance were unfortunately mistaken. Kiev not only very quickly returned to its bellicose rhetoric and continued the shelling of civilians, but also did everything it could to sabotage and ultimately destroy the Minsk agreements. And most importantly here is the flat refusal of Kiev to speak directly with the representatives of Donetsk and Lugansk, despite the fact that this requirement is a central structural element of the package of measures. An unambiguous confirmation of an unwillingness to engage in that dialogue is something we've heard repeatedly from Ukrainian leaders in the last few days, including from the permanent representative of Ukraine during the Security Council meeting that we convened on the 17th of February to discuss the implementation of the Minsk agreements. After that, it became clear once and for all that Ukraine did not intend to implement the Minsk agreements. And I would like to recall and remind my colleagues on the Security Council that in all other conflicts, be it Libya, Syria or Yemen, we all demand and call for direct dialogue between the parties to the conflict. And it's only in Ukraine, for example, the Ukraine that is for some reason an exception to this rule. Many of you don't want to hear about this, about the tragedies happening in Ukraine after the Maidan coup in 2014. And those people who burnt alive in Odessa and the crimes against those who didn't agree with them. And the most blatant example of this was the war against Donbass rolled out by Kiev. Over the last eight years, Europe and the US have been pumping Ukraine with weapons so that those people can kill civilians in Donbass. And the loyal authorities in Kiev are fully ignoring the Minsk agreements and sabotaging Security Council Resolution 2202. I'll link to videos about that in the video description and at the end of this video.